What's going on guys, Jacob here and in today's video we are going to be talking about when adding more volume isn't the answer. So with the rise of evidence-based fitness, we've seen a huge trend towards volume and rightly so because the scientific literature has shown that volume plays a key role in muscle hypertrophy and especially with the recent study uh, conducted by Brad Schoenfeld that showed greater volumes, uh, upwards of 30 sets a week, even 45 sets a week, produce greater hypertrophy. It's commonplace now for people to think they need to add more volume to their training to get better results because the research says so. However, what I wanna do in today's video is discuss some of the key factors that you need to keep in mind when thinking about adding more volume to your training. So, first up is your rate of progress. So, you are going to progress at a rate dependent on your genetics, but primarily your training level of advancement. So, if you're a beginner, you can see a progression in weight on the bar, session to session. So you might perform a squat, and every time you go to squat, you can add weight to the bar. You probably don't need to add volume. Now, before we go any further, we need to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples and we're all on the same page here. We need to define what I mean by volume. And when I say volume, I'm talking about hard working sets per muscle group with the caveat of the rep range being between six and 20 with an RPE of six or more. So that way we constrain uh, the number of reps we're performing and the intensity of load and effort. So if you're progressing according to your level of advancement, then you probably don't need to add more volume. Remembering that your rate of progress in terms of your strength, because that's one of the key metrics we want to be measuring in the gym, uh, especially when our goal is muscle growth, we want to more so be paying attention to our repetition strength across multiple sets and multiple exercises, including our isolation exercises. But if you're not seeing that rate of progress in alignment with your training level of advancement, you need to add more volume. So beginners, weekly, even daily, and session to session progress in terms of weight on the bar, Intermediates it might be every week or fortnight where they can add weight to the bar and as you become more and more advanced That rate of progress is going to slow down significantly. You might only see uh, Improvements in your strength uh, repetition strength every month every second month third month every six months It really comes to a grinding halt which can be quite frustrating And that's when you might need to add in more volume to fast track your gains the second consideration I want you guys to have is to think pragmatically about your program design. Whilst often we are enticed by the scientific literature and we look to it as a guide and a starting point for what we should be doing, we often forget to be pragmatic and think logically and rationally when putting together programs. And for many of you, you're not elite level bodybuilders, you're recreational lifters trying to look better, feel better and get a six pack bigger chest, biceps, and all the rest of it. You're not paid to go to the gym, you're not sponsored by supplement companies, and you're not going on the Olympia stage, which means you have other responsibilities in life, and time is a precious commodity for you, as it is for me. And we need to remember that adding additional sets to our training program is going to mean we need to spend more time in the gym. And for many people, our programs can become unrealistic if we're doing 20 plus sets per week per muscle group, especially if we're doing that across a number of muscle groups and we're training with a high uh, frequency, so four or more sessions a week, that's a lot of time in the gym potentially upwards of 10 hours a week. And for some of you, that might not be feasible. And if it's detracting from your quality of life and your ability to uphold your responsibilities, then adding more volume to make a little bit more progress, simply not worth it. You need to consider the cost to benefit ratio. So the cost associated with adding more volume in terms of the time that it will take uh, away from other things in your life versus the potential benefit you're going to get by potentially gaining a couple of grams of muscle uh, you know, in a month or two month period. Is it really worth it? I'll leave that up to you to decide. I'm not here to judge. The third factor I want to consider or have you guys think about before you add more volume is your repetition execution. So your technique, is your form consistent and are you executing the lifts appropriately? And what I mean by that is we need to think about resistance training from a mechanics and a biomechanical standpoint. We have external load, that load places tension on the muscles, the muscles contract to overcome that resistance. Now, if your technique is really, really crappy and you're lifting weights using momentum inertia on your bicep curls, your knees and hips and other joints are involved, there's compensatory movement and you're simply not loading that resistance on the target muscle group effectively, you don't need to add more volume because the current volume that you're performing is simply not 
being maximized. You need to maximize the current volumes and place as much of the tension from those volumes onto the muscle groups so you can get the most uh, potent training effect possible. And this is really important before you even consider adding more volume. Finally, recovery. This is a big one. Your nutrition, your sleep, your food, your lifestyle. So if you're drinking, smoking, staying up late and really, really stressed, don't add more volume. You need to make sure that even if you're not progressing at the rate appropriate for your level of advancement, it very well could be your recovery that's uh, the limiting factor, so you need to address that. It could also be your technique, and again, it could be time constraints that you need to consider. So before you go adding more volume, really make sure that you have your nutrition dialed in, you're hitting your calories, you're eating enough protein, you're timing your meals properly, you're sleeping at least six to eight hours of quality sleep, you're not overly stressed, and your joints and your soft tissues are recovering from the current volumes that you're performing, and this is a big one. If you're starting to feel beat up, adding more volume is not always the answer. That's only gonna lead to a bigger recovery hole that you potentially can't climb out of, because with every unit of volume is a unit of risk and a unit of fatigue. So the more volume we include in our programs, we're adding in more fatigue, which means we need to recover before we get adaptation. So really important to remember our SRA curve. So we stimulate through uh, the disruption and the tension that we place on the body in our training sessions. We then need to recover before we get those positive adaptations. So this is huge. When we're trying to drive adaptations, we need to recover, which means we need to be looking at those factors that I discussed. So guys, that is when adding more volume is not the answer. And when it is the answer, I hope this video was useful. I hope you guys found it informative. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all next time.